So most of us here at IIM Bangalore have been consistent achievers, at least in some domain or the other, for all our lives. But some time at IIM Bangalore is good enough to make you feel that you are not good enough. So how do you deal with the pressure of being relatively average? It's best somebody makes you feel that right here, because anyway that may happen in your life. It can happen in your work, it can happen in your family. Somebody will tell you you're not good enough <laughs> So whether they tell you or not, I want you to understand, none of us are ever really good enough. If you have a large-scale intention in the world, you are never really good enough. People keep telling me, Sadhguru, you've done so many things, this project, that project. I'll tell you my project, because yes, the day before yesterday I was the Chamundi Hill. This happened thirty-seven years ago. I went up Chamundi Hill and sat there. For no reason, I was overflowing with ecstasy, every cell in my body exploding. I didn't know what was happening. When I spoke to my closest friends, they said, Tell me, what did you drink? What did you pop? This is the only thing they could ask. When I asked my own skeptical mind, my mind said, maybe you're going off the rocker. But I knew I've hit a gold mine. Something fantastic is happening within me without any reason. If I simply sit like this, I become so ecstatic. What I think is two minutes have gone into seven, eight hours. Have you noticed this? When you're very happy, Time just poof. So if I close my eyes and open, it's like eight, ten hours are gone, like that. So at that time, I just planned. This is my plan. This is fantastic. If I simply sit here, I'm completely blissed out. Then I decided. At that time, the world's population was some 5.6 five, 5 billion people. I said, in two and a half years' time, I'm going to… I made a plan, a specific plan, how I will do it. In two and a half years' time, I'm going to have the entire world blissed out because it doesn't take anything. If you simply sit here, it happens. Well, thirty-seven years, huh? <laughs> Well, we might have touched uh, maybe on five hundred, six hundred million people on the planet, but that's not my idea of the world. My idea of the world today is 7.6 billion people. So I know I will die a failure, hundred percent. And everything else that I wish to do, I know I will not even fulfill probably ten, fifteen percent of what I want to do, but I will die blissfully because I'm living blissfully and I will die blissfully. So it's best that you're a failure in your life. That means your vision is large. If you're a success, you have a constipated sense of life <laughs> Success means what? I made it. What did you make? I bought a house site. You would think that's an achievement. I got a job. I made this much money. This is a very constipated way of looking at life. I want young people to look at it in terms of how we can do something that cannot be done in this lifetime. Oh, what will happen if I don't fulfill it? If you… if you work incessantly and still at the end of your life the job is not done, it doesn't mean you're a failure, it means you had a great vision. <laughs> That's what it means. May you die as a failure, is that okay? Yeah. You should, blissed out failure, that means you're doing great, not a miserable success. <laughs>